डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर ए जी सिन्हा अ प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोथेरेपी पंजाबी यूनिवर्सिटी पटियाला इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ रिहेबिलिटेशन द वर्ड रिहेबिलिटेशन इज अ वर्सेटाइल वर्ड इट इज यूज इन मेनी कंटेक्सट एंड इन मेनी डिफरेंट वेज we often come across terms like rehabilitation of people with disability rehabilitation of flood victims rehabilitation of war injured rehabilitation of land displaced and so on and so forth in each of these context the word rehabilitation is interpreted differently in the context of healthcare the rehabilitation is described as tertiary level health care service in sports injury the word treatment and rehabilitation are often used interchangeably the modalities used in both the procedures are almost similar this makes the task of defining rehabilitation difficult and often it becomes difficult to pinpoint which method is rehabilitation and which method of is treatment in order to understand the complete meaning of rehabilitation and understanding of the various concepts of health and disability is necessary friends in this module we shall be talking about the models of health care and disability and we try to find out the exact meaning of rehabilitation in context of health and rehabilitation in the second part of this lecture we shall be talking about the objectives and the methods of rehabilitation of sports injuries rehabilitation is a versatile word interpreted differently by different people we often come across phrases like rehabilitation of disabled rehabilitation of flood victim rehabilitation of war and injuries rehabilitation of land displaced etc etc in all these phrases the term rehabilitation is used in different context in context of health care delivery rehabilitation is described as tertiary level prevention in context of sports injury management it is held that sports injury require rehabilitation and rehabilitation should be administered along with treatment rehabilitation of sports injury involves judicious use of therapeutic exercises and modalities these modalities are often used during treatment also in order to understand the difference between the rehabilitation and treatment a conceptual orientation toward the models of health and disability is necessary in this module we shall discuss the concept of rehabilitation in context of healthcare and understand the role of rehabilitation following sports injury after going through this module you shall be able to understand the concept of rehabilitation in healthcare delivery understand the various models of health and disability discuss the level of healthcare delivery and describe the need and objective of rehabilitation following sports injuries rehabilitation is composed of two words re means again and habilitation means to make fit or capable of living thus the rehabilitation means making fit to live again it also means restoration of habitat restoration of lost pride and dignity and restoration of performance rehabilitation is intimately associated with disaster or a serious disruption that threatens the very existence of a person it indicates that something wrong might have happened to the individual due to which he is now unable to live in a way he was living before the disaster therefore 
attempts that require restoring the life and dignity of a person must not confine to the disaster alone, rather it should be directed toward restoration of capability, skills and the environment of the person. Rehabilitation is completely successful when the person achieves all he could in his previous leaving. Individual may lose all his property and relatives to a devastating flood and he may remain the only member of his family. Similarly, a soldier might have been injured in a war to such an extent that it is not possible for him to leave the life of soldier again. These are the situation where one has to learn to leave again by making adjustment to the loss incurred, developing new capacity and skills and modifying the environment to compensate for the deficiencies. And this makes the field of rehabilitation multidisciplinary that not only involved the medical or health services but also the physical services, educational services, psychological, vocational, social and economical interventions. For a performing sports person, there is nothing more disastrous than his inability to play due to injury. To an athlete who hopes to win a medal in a national or international competition, even a slight injury may restrict his participation in the competition and it may represent a disaster for that person. Efforts that enable the athlete to participate again in the competition after sustaining an injury can be equated with giving a new life to the athlete, thus it can be grouped under rehabilitation. However, this leaves another term undefined. That word is treatment. Normally, when one suffers from some disease or injury, he goes to hospital and seek treatment for his problem. In the management of sports injury, the term treatment and rehabilitation are often used interchangeably. Several modalities and techniques are used in both the situation and at times it becomes difficult to pinpoint which method is treatment and which method is rehabilitation. Notwithstanding the overlap in the method employed by these two approaches, the goals of these two approaches are totally different and this difference lies in their objective. Treatment is directed at the disease or injury, whereas the focus of rehabilitation is on disability. The treatment deals with disease or injury, whereas rehabilitation deals with disability. In order to understand the role and importance of rehabilitation and how it is different from treatment, it is necessary to have a basic understanding of the concepts related to health, disease and disability. There are several models of health and disability and we are going to discuss these models. Now, in this model, we can see that health and disability are the two end of a ladder representing the health status and functioning. As a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Many experts believe that this optimal state of health is an idealistic construct which is seldom maintained for a long time. An individual constantly interacts with a variety of environmental factors and his homeostasis is in the state of constant change. When these changes are of sufficient magnitude, a damage to the tissue occurs which gives rise to the disease. The specific tissue damage associated with the disease is known as lesion. Disease or injury may produce a loss of structure or and function of an organ that puts restriction on the ability to carry out certain functional activities. The loss of structure and function of an organ is referred as impairment whereas the functional limitations arising out of impairment is known as disability. 
when the disability comes in the way of executing the assigned role in the society, the situation of handicapped arise. The lesion can be reversible or irreversible. That means it is possible to repair the lesion or many lesions are irreparable. Diseases similarly can be curable or incurable. Likewise, the impairment, disability and handicap can be temporary or permanent. The temporary one goes away with the repair of lesion. In many diseases, the lesion is irreparable and the person has to live with permanent impairment and he faces inherent difficulty in performing many activities of his life. This condition may be said to give rise to the condition of permanent disability. An example will clarify this point. The damage to cornea of eye due to disease or injury produce the loss of sight, which is the function of eyes, due to which the person becomes unable to read or walk in a manner that is considered normal. This puts him in a disadvantageous position as far as his ability to execute the socially assigned role is considered. The above consequence of disease and disability is known as ICDH model. This was proposed by WHO way back in 1980 and it is also known as the medical model of disability. This model stresses the biological origin of a disabling condition and it views disability as a personal problem that is directly caused by disease, trauma or other health condition. However, disability is not always the result of lesion or disease. Social factor such as lack of opportunity to develop skill or unfavorable environmental situation also produces disability. The social model of disability views the phenomena of disability as a socially created problem and not as an attribute to the person. It identifies three barriers that makes a person with impairment handicapped and disabled. Environment, attitude and organizations are the three main barriers existing within the society that play, according to this model, a significant role in the genesis of disability. In 2001, in order to provide a common language for disability, World Health Organization introduced International Classification of Health and Functioning, abbreviated as ICF, where the above two models are integrated. ICF views health and functioning of an individual from biological, personal and social perspectives. It identifies three levels of human functioning. Functioning at the level of body or body parts, that is the body structure and function. The functioning at the whole person level activity and the activity of a person in his complete environment. The domains of activity and participation captures the effect of structural and functional impairment on what a person with a health condition can do in his or her environment. Activity is a task that has a context or meaning, whereas participation is the involvement in life situation. The acts of walking, eating, jumping, throwing, etc. are activity. In contrast, participation implies walking in social group, eating out with friends and throwing a ball in cricket. In ICF, disability is an umbrella term that denotes a decrement at each level of functioning. According to ICF, there would be three components of disability, impairment, activity limitation and participation restriction. Impairment is the loss of a structure or function of an organ of body such as loss of limb, loss of vision, loss of range of motion, loss of muscle strength. The example of activity limitations would be walking, eating, running and jumping whereas participation restriction would imply inability to jump in a sports event, walk in a market and so on. 
the ultimate aim of health care services is to keep every member of society in optimal health condition and prevent the downwards fall of an individual in the ladder of health. The spectrum of entire health care delivery revolves around prevention and it can be grouped under three broad headings. Prevention, the first level care, treatment, the second level health care and rehabilitation, the third level or tertiary level health care. The intervention done after the occurrence of disease fall under the categories of treatment and rehabilitation services whereas preventive services include the measures taken before the occurrence of disease. The methods that allow a person to remain at the highest step of the ladder by preventing the occurrence of disease or lesion can be termed as health promotion measures or prevention. These are typically administered before the occurrence of disease. They allow the person to remain at the highest step of health ladder. Wearing of helmet, warm up or a stretching before game, consumption of healthy and nutritious food, vaccination, obeying traffic rule, etc. are some of the health prevention measures that have a role in reducing the occurrence of disease and injuries. Treatment seek to eliminate or minimize the impairment by removing the causative agent and reversal of lesion. It targets the causative factor for lesion and attempts to reduce discomfort and impairment. Curative treatment targets the cause of disease and work to eliminate it. It is expected that with the removal of the cause, the consequence of disease would be arrested and person would achieve health status. This concept is known as cure. Palliative treatment attempts to reduce the sign and symptom without affecting the causative factors. There are many diseases where the cause of disease are not identified as yet or it is not possible to remove the cause. In such situation, palliative treatment becomes important in order to provide comfort and reduce suffering. If we take an example, then an anti-malaria drug is the example of curative treatment because it targets the causative organism of malaria. On the other hand, antipyretic drugs, the medicine that is given to reduce the fever, represents the palliative or symptomatic treatment that brings down the fever without affecting the cause of malaria. The focus area of rehabilitation is disability. The rehabilitation measures seek to minimize the impact of impairment and reduces the extent of disability. The rehabilitation can be restorative or compensatory. Restorative rehabilitation measures tend to correct the impairment and eliminate the ensuing disability. Whereas compensatory rehabilitation measures tend to compensate for the loss of function or structure by providing suitable skills and equipment in order to minimize the impact of impairment on activity and participation. An example will further clarify this concept. Following fracture of bone, immobilization by plaster of Paris is prescribed that produced a stiffness of knee joint and weakness of thigh muscles, due to which the person is not able to walk, thus he is unable to attend his office. In this situation, the fracture of bone represents lesion, immobilization represents the treatment whereas the stiffness of knee joint and weakness of thigh represents impairments and the inability to walk is activity limitation and not attending the office is actually the participation restriction. The person is prescribed with therapeutic exercises and given training to walk with crutches. When the bone unites and he gains the range and strength he will discard the crutch and go to office as he was going before the accident. 
therapeutic exercises in this situation represent the corrective rehabilitation measures that tends to restore the range of motion and strength of muscle around the knee, whereas training to walk with crutches is a compensatory rehabilitation measure that compensate for the loss of ability to walk and enable the person to resume his work despite impairment and disability. This is a situation of reversible impairment and disability where the combined use of treatment and rehabilitation method helps a person to climb up the ladder from disability to health. Now we shall extend these concepts to the care of injured athlete and shall try to understand the meaning of rehabilitation of sports injuries. Sports injury is the loss of cell or extracellular matrix resulting from an externally applied force that produces disruption of normal anatomical structure and function. But the sports injury also produces a number of impairments and restricts the activity and participation. The impairment after injury are the consequence of the injury and its treatment as well as the consequences of the detraining. The stiffness of a joint or loss of range of motion, reduced muscle strength, loss of proprioceptions are the direct consequences of the injury whereas the reduction in the physiological parameter of fitness and sports skill is the result of detraining. The difference between the treatment and rehabilitation is their objective. The treatment of a sports injury, the aim is the restoration of anatomical continuity of the injured structure by bridging the gap with the new tissue. Whereas the rehabilitation works to restore the function and performance. A treatment can be conservative or it can be surgical, but the ultimate purpose of treatment is the restoration of the anatomical continuity. We need to know about why rehabilitation is important for sports injury. The time required for repair of a lesion may range from weeks to month and during this period player cannot undertake full training. And we know that most of the training induced adaptations are reversible and cessation of training produces a drastic reduction in the physical capability. It is said that physiological gains made over the five months of training would entirely be lost within six to eight weeks of detraining. Therefore, the period of rest and relative inactivity during management of a sports injury has the potential to reverse the training induced adaptation provoke a decline in the fitness parameter and limit the ability to perform with maximal efficiency. Returning to play without addressing these impairment is one of the main cause of the recurrence of sports injury. It may even force the player to take premature retirement from the sports. Fortunately, the impairments and disability resulting from most of the sports injuries are of temporary nature and can be reversed with the judicious use of therapeutic exercises and modalities. The extent of deconditioning can be reduced by maintaining the reduced level of training. The sports rehabilitation is basically a reconditioning program that is based on the same principle and methods that are used in physical training. However, here the focus is the injured athletes and the majors and the therapeutic procedures or the training procedures are used with care so that the repair of the lesion is not disturbed in any manner. The objectives of sports rehabilitation program are closely linked with impairment and generally focuses on the restoration of mobility and flexibility, muscle strength and endurance, balance, coordination, agility, aerobic and anaerobic capacity 
and finally the sports specific skills. Reduction in the range of motion and flexibility are the inevitable consequences of injury and immobilization and it is one of the main region for the post acute pain. The immobilization of one joint also restrict the movements produced in the other joint which are not affected by the injury. The restoration of the full range of joint motion and length of soft tissue is the first goal of any rehabilitation program. The methods used for this purpose are active range of motion exercise, passive movements, manual therapy and stretching along with the judicious use of heat and cold modalities. The another impairment very common after sports injuries are the reduction in muscle strength and endurance. Pain, injury and inflammation gives rise to muscle inhibition that initiates muscle wasting within hours. Everyone is reluctant to move the injured part due to pain and apprehension is a common knowledge. This inability to willingly contract the muscle in physiological jargon is known as muscle inhibition. The restoration of strength and bulk of muscle require a gradual progressive registered exercise program. The different component of muscle conditioning program include muscle activation, strengthening, power and endurance building. Accuracy and smoothness of a movement required a coordinated action of several muscles. A muscle contracts in response to the neural impulse generated by the nervous system. During functional activity, nervous system constantly modify the neural signals according to the changing position of joint which produces the variation in the contraction of muscle. The information about the joint position and movement is provided by the proprioceptors. Sports injury produces damage to the proprioceptors present in the skin, muscle, ligament and tendon that gives rise to delay in the communication of the position of joints to the brain and gives rise to generation of improper motor signal. This is manifested in the form of inaccurate movements reduced balance, feeling sensation of giving way of joint and fall during sporting activity. The proprioceptive loss can be compensated by balance exercises and protective taping. The proprioceptive and balance training is also known as neuromuscular retraining which is an important component of rehabilitation and injury prevention. It is imperative that neuromuscular retraining should be instituted as early and it must continue throughout the program. The cardiopulmonary endurance is primarily a function of oxygen transport system that indicate how long a person can work at a given intensity without getting fatigued. It is recommended that dynamic exercises at intensities of 60 to 90 percent of maximum heart rate reserve for at least 15 minutes should be performed for at least 3 days per week in order to maintain and enhance endurance. In case of the injuries of lower limb, the usual aerobic activity of the athletic conditioning program such as walking, running and jogging is not possible. In these situation, it is important to maintain the aerobic fitness by designing alternate exercise regime. Bicycling, underwater running, swimming are some of the activities which can be performed in the non weight bearing positions. The restoration of functional and sports skill is the last and ultimate goal of rehabilitation program that should be started once the strength, range and balance reaches a sufficient level. Any deviation from the normal pattern of movement should be detected and corrected. The goal of skill restoration requires a close supervision and a cooperation among the coach, physiotherapist and the biomechanical analyst. The rehabilitation program is implemented in several phases. 
each having different goals and methods. The impairments need to be ascertained by careful assessment of the athlete and the clear goal should be set. It is only after the successful achievement of the goal, next stage of rehabilitation should be instituted. A rehabilitation program is successful if the player completes a full session without sustaining any injury. The phase one of sports rehabilitation typically consists of obtaining pain-free movement, whereas phase two concerns with strength restoration, the next phase is balance restoration and then the endurance restorations. Once these above four uh, impairments are corrected, the sports skill are reintroduced and finally the person is allowed to return to sports. The treatment by conservative and surgical method reduces the discomfort of player and enable him to execute the activity of daily living. And uh, it is commonly seen that after the removal of discomfort, player stop participating in the therapeutic exercise program. It is important to understand that the return to the previous level of performance is not possible if the player has the existing impairments. Therefore, it would not be incorrect to say that return to previous level of performance is not possible without undergoing active rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is focused on restoration of functional ability of the person. It relates to the minimization of impairment and reducing the impact of disability. Although rehabilitation is described as the tertiary level prevention, it is now agreed upon by everybody that rehabilitation measures should be started along with the treatment. The treatment methods are directed at the lesion or disease and typically administered during the stage of pathogenesis, whereas the rehabilitation is applied after the pathogenesis and it focuses on impairment and disability. In context of sports injury, the rehabilitation measures are extremely important. After injury, a number of impairments are developed in athlete. These impairment ranges from limitation of range of motion to weakness of muscle strength, reduced cardiopulmonary endurance, reduced agility and reduced balance. And it is important to correct these impairments using appropriate therapeutic modalities and therapeutic exercises. Without rehabilitation, the chance of re-injury of player increases many fold. Thank you.